Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets and tax reform. Jim, what happens to stocks if we don't get tax reform? Um, well, I think that ultimately, if you get an ACA situation where they totally fail, Dow goes down 500. <laughs> Any delay is fine. They just this is very self-imposed, uh, so I think that we'll be okay. But the uncertainty is certainly driving stocks, and technology already had a headwind. This just accelerates the headwind. And you also said this morning that Norfolk Southern is the key to this. Well, you know, market. I didn't mean to pick on James Squires, but it's just that you know, you got a stock that's selling at 22 times earnings, and the earnings haven't gone up at all. And you can see the earnings could be going down because of coal, uh, and yet it's just been up and up and up. Uh, I don't like multiple expansion, uh, uh, buying, in other words, that you're paying more for the same earnings, pay more for the same earnings, and now you've got a stock that is, uh, I, I think, relatively overvalued versus a Facebook or a, an Alphabet on 2019 earnings. Why do I mention 2019 earnings? Because we're going to turn the page to 2018, and remember how stocks are always valued. What's it going to do next year? When we get to 2018, we're going to be 2019 is the year we're going to be looking at. And I think another thing not getting enough attention is the rise in WTI this morning. Yes, I think that uh, three reasons. One is Venezuela, uh, this, the, because they're really, I mean, it's falling apart. By the way, a lot of the Bitcoin is trading in Venezuela. The second is that uh, Iraq has been cut back because of uh, issues that are pretty obvious involving the Civil War. Uh, and, you know, people are, are, are underestimating Saudi Arabian discipline. Uh, and Saudi Arabian discipline is very meaningful. So I think that oil can take out 60. If oil can take out 60, you've got a very different formula for what's going to happen. We've been taking action, action alerts based on oil going higher. Hmm. Watch out for those bulletins. Meanwhile, Jim, Amazon filing with seven states to sell medical devices, not necessarily pharmaceuticals. Yeah, that's very controversial because the St. Louis Post-Dispatch on October 27th reported that, that these were medical, uh, and that sent down... Um, a, a huge sent down CVS, uh, uh, sent down Walgreens. Uh, this morning, people are reacting incorrectly. If Amazon is really doing that very limited uh, foray, then uh, Walgreens is getting interesting. Of course, obviously, Amazon's attacking the front of the store, so that's mm. difficult. So when we hear the reason that you know CVS wants to buy Aetna is because of Amazon, is that still true in your view? Not really, but that's David. I'm just um, parroting David Faber, who questions the need to do that. Ah, okay. Maybe. But I, look, I do think that both you know, this is a week, Scott, where we're finding out who is getting hurt by Amazon and who isn't. And we know that Costco's not being hurt. We know that Walmart's not being hurt. It's interesting because Walmart does a lot of groceries, so does Costco. Uh, and we had this kind of revelation that Kroger right now is not being hurt. Now, I am saying that Amazon is in its infancy of what it might want to do. So let's be very careful in buying those stocks up. Now, a Macy's, where they just hired 7,000 more sales associates, that can be a trade into the holiday season. Now, it's also been confirmed. Remember, PVH, which makes, you know, has a hammerlock on shirts and ties. Manny Chirico told me, the CEO, that again, department stores are doing well. So Macy's went from being on the, uh, the do not resuscitate list to be in critical care, and I think it can graduate to the 27, 28 level. Huh. Yeah, many told you it was the best holiday season in what, yeah, four, four, in four years? years now. Wow. That, that, that's code for go back and look what Macy's did four years ago, hmm. and you realize that they had a really good quarter. Huh. All right, meanwhile, Jim Morgan Stanley out with a note yesterday saying that, you know, investors are not looking at iPhone demand in China the right way. What do you think? Yes, yeah, Scott, I mean, it really was a definitive business. You know, that's Kathy, uh, yeah, it's Katie Huberty. Yeah. Uh, Katie Huberty was the one who uh, put the kibosh on Western Digital, the one that we, we were so afraid, of, not afraid, we were so certain that flash prices would go down that we sold Western Digital much, much higher for action alerts. This piece is saying that you're, if you don't look at the activated uh, Apple phones, if you just look at Apple in some sort of sterile nature, you'll think that they're doing poorly in China. They're actually doing well in China. Katie Huberty has been the most accurate about Apple. I'm glad she's coming on uh, Squawk Alley today. Uh, but be aware that she caused a lot of the Western digital decline, uh, uh, a lot of the Micron decline. That was not her purpose, but Micron does have flash, and a lot of the LAM research decline because they make the sheet, they make the big machines in order to be able to make flash. Martin Nance is a great executive. They're doing a $2 billion buyback. They're um, increasing the dividend, but it doesn't matter. Some people are saying that we are at peak flash. Uh, Katie Huberty's indicating that. There's, one, there's not many peaks out there. I will go with Katie Huberty on that judgment. 
All right, meanwhile, there are reports that Broadcom could wait until next year to raise its offer for yes, Qualcomm. Yes, and now you're, they're doing the proxy fight, so there really is no reason they should uh, have to wait. I know the stories read very negatively for Broadcom, and Broadcom is coming down negatively because people want Hawk Tan to move and move and move. He's the CEO of Broadcom, and I really admire his work. Uh, but I do uh, say, listen, it's the proxy fight that's going to make it so that this stock uh, flies. And if they can get the, as I said, the deal economy speech yesterday, if they can get Qualcomm for 80, you could see a gain of now 85 points for Broadcom. Hmm. $80, is that a creative? Huh, and um, does Broadcom, they're also looking to nominate some board members. Do they that's, get? That's the proxy for them. Right, do you think they get the, their yeah, people yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. All right, meanwhile, so what does this whole thing mean for NXPI, though? Well, NXPI is up today, which is really interesting because it should be, uh, what people are saying is, if Broadcom's delaying, then NXPI, the Qualcomm deal with NXPI will close. Uh, and that's really the real implication of Broadcom delaying going with the proxy fight, is that it may make it so that Qualcomm, I'm sorry, if Qualcomm can raise the price for NXPI from 110, we have been holding NXPI for action alerts. Why? Even though we usually take something off the table, and we did a little bit, but we, we usually say to people, tender, we can't tender if the stock's at 114, why tender 110 bit? So we think that Qualcomm will raise. This is an opportunity for Qualcomm to raise uh, during the delay, but the delay, remember, uh, is a kind of a facetious delay because obviously they're going to go for the proxy fight. Broadcom gets its own people on, and then they won't have to pay $100 or walk away. So this is indeed good for NXPI, good for Action Alerts Club members. All right, keep an eye on those bulletins at actionalertsplus.com. All right, Jim, what are you expecting from the Eagles this Sunday? Well, you know, it's a tough fight. I mean, the one there's two places that are, are really difficult to play at when you're uh, on the road, and one is uh, Boston, obviously, you know, New England. But the other is Seattle, and uh, the line is wrong, I think. I think it's going to be a tighter game. Uh, Seattle running backs weak, Seattle defense riddled. Uh, but at the same time, big Sunday night game at home, uh, you'll have to have uh, Carson Wentz do a, a kind of a different snap count. Uh, I think he's good enough to be able to do it, but it'll be closer than the uh, closer than the betting line says. All right, we'll be watching and looking out for your tweets. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you, Jim. All right, for more information on the stocks Jim just mentioned, head over to thestreet.com.